I grew up in East Palo Alto. What was that like? It was, it was fine. And like not really hard or anything, but it was okay. When looking at a map, the cities of East Palo Alto and Palo Alto don't seem too different. Sure, East Palo Alto is nearly a tenth of the size of Palo Alto and is located actually north of Palo Alto, but to see the differences, you really have to be in the areas. Welcome to East Palo Alto, or EPA. EPA is no stranger to profound crime and poverty. In 1992, East Palo Alto had the highest homicide rate in the country. Based on FBI crime data, EPA is not one of the safest communities in America. There is an above average chance of being a victim of property crime, such as motor vehicle theft, arson, and burglary. As such, homes and businesses are often secured by gates and guard dogs and schools offer classes for the safety of their students and their families. Well, from when I was younger, there's not a lot of violence anymore. There's still some, but not as severe as back in 2000, so, like 2001, that it was very like a shooting every night or something like that. So like gun violence, it's in gangs, but no longer like that heavy. I mean, there's little break-ins here and there, and you know, robberies, but not many killings. You start seeing kids as young as like 12, and, or at least 9 to 12, start influ getting influenced by gangs. In fact, only two-thirds of the adults in East Palo Alto have actually achieved high school degrees. Looking at college, the statistic is even worse. Only one in six adults end up completing a bachelor's degree. The median household income in Palo Alto is over double that of East Palo Alto, and nearly 20% of people in East Palo Alto are below the poverty line. Getting children off the streets and focused in school is no easy task, but many nonprofits exist trying to do just that. One such nonprofit, Bayshore Christian Ministries, formed with the goal of equipping East of Bayshore youth with life and leadership skills so the children might have hope and a future. Through tutoring, Bible study and mentoring, children earn huge gains academically and behaviorally while developing a relationship with God. Wania grew up with the program and chose to return to help inspire the children of today to not give up on themselves. So it's something that I wanted to do so I could stay off the street so I wouldn't fall into those crowds or, you know, something like that. It was something for me to do that was positive and not something that I was forced to do. Yeah. The kids weren't interns, so I had two of the kids who were, or, who were like me when I was younger. And they get help for, by me and so I can like, succeed. So basically I just tutor them in all their subjects and homework. I see like myself in the kids a lot, like growing up. And so I, I relate more to them and I understand like how they, like, how they're growing up now. I had a student who like, he didn't want to come to the Kids Mart at all. And like his mom forces him to come still to this day. And so he was getting all Fs on his vocab work. So he had spelling words to do every week. And he never memorized anything. He couldn't sound the words out. And so we started doing our time game. And he, he knew like how to race me in everything. So I was like, well, why not use that in vocab? So every week on Monday, I write his words down for him on a note card and we race to memorize the spelling of the vocab word. And so um, like the week, the next week he came back with his test and he was like, oh, you didn't help me. You, you gave me, I got an F on this test. And I was like, what, how? You were doing so great. And he like showed it to me and he had 100%. Aww. And he was, it was his first 100% Aww. like ever. So he was very happy. So, it doesn't feel like a job at BCM. Even though it is a job, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like a place that I'm coming to, like, not really hang out, but like, you know, <laughs> work and be around positive people and, you know, to make a difference, not just doing a job just to do a job. BCM is, I don't know, like a family to me. It's like a second family to me. I think that's why I keep coming back. <laughs> the students, the, the enlightenment I see and like the excitement and the 
happiness they feel when they see me every day or when they get something done correctly or even if they get frustrated they see that I don't give up on them so they don't give up on themselves. Yeah. I'll be sad to leave but I know I, it'll, BCM will always be here for me so it's something that I'm like, I cherish.